Cubs shallow left. It drops. It drops. Cubs win. Cubs win. Bryant scores. David Ross wins it two to one. From inside Marlins Park in Miami, Florida, Comcast Sportsnet brings you Chicago Cubs baseball. The Cubs open up the month of June with a nine-game, ten-day road trip, Miami, Washington, D.C., and Detroit. Great to have you with us. Great to have short sleeves on tonight. Jim Deshays and Len Casper here. The roof is closed tonight. And the Cubs coming off a 500 month of May and back to back non losing months. First time they've done that to start a season in a while. Yeah, let's uh, dig into the numbers a little bit here. The Cubs uh, struggle to score runs, especially the second half of May. You see in April, 12 and 8, scoring four and a half runs per game. Run production down significantly in the month of May. The starting pitching really stepped it up. That 329 starters ERA, the third best in the National League in the month of May. So the Miami Marlins, some turmoil in the dugout. They recently fired their manager, Mike Redmond. The general manager, Dan Jennings, took over. They've got a lot of injuries in their starting rotation, but they still have one of the most exciting outfielders in the game today. Yeah, John Carlos Stanton, uh, the Miami masher, hits balls like none other. You see the numbers on him. Hitting just 228, so the batting average way down, but he's on a pace for 47 home runs. His 44 RBIs a lead Major League Baseball. Obviously a very, very, very dangerous bat in the middle of that Marlin lineup. And Stanton signed a 13-year contract prior to this season. Jason Hamill will get his 10th start of the year for the Cubs. It'll be a rookie right-hander, Jose Urania, for the Marlins. Cubs and Fish are next.
are by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T Uverse, find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT, mobilizing your world. Ford, check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Welcome back to sunny Miami, a little uh, hot and humid, so the roof is closed tonight. And we'd like to welcome all our viewers watching on Zing TV in Rensselaer, Indiana. Cubs and Marlins opening up a three-game series. All three games will have a nighttime start. Bill Welke will work the plate tonight. Sam Holbrook's at first, James Hoy. Ahoy, James. He's at second. John Hirschbeck, the crew chief. Is over at third. Hoy vey. <laughs> Tonight's Cubs leadoff man gets a hit. Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to Make a Wish, Illinois. Every once in a while you run into an all time series that's pretty close. This one's as close as it gets since 1993. 86 up, 86 down. The Cubs are 45 and 45. At Wrigley Field against the Marlins. They went 36 and 36 at the old place. Joe Robbie slash Pro Player slash Sun Life slash Dolphin Stadium. And they're 5 and 5 here since Marlins Park opened in 2012. So something's got to give tonight, JD. Yeah, they won uh, two out of three here last year. And uh, I would suggest they do some damage here in this series because after this, it's on to Washington. And then into Detroit for two. So uh, fairly stiff competition after this series. The pitching matchups look pretty good for the Cubs. And this one, there's Dan Jennings. He's the new manager. Hard to replace Mike Redman. He was, uh, you know, the idea was that he would bring a spark, a real motivator. The general manager moves into the manager seat, a very unorthodox move. So far, they are 4 and 9 under Jennings. They're really banged up in their rotation. Four out of their five. Main starters, and we're including Jose Fernandez, and in that he's coming back for Tommy John surgery uh, on the DL. Uh, the only guy who's not is Dan Heron, and we'll see him on Wednesday night against John Lester. And now the Marlins will take the field behind right hander Jose Oreña, and he'll face the following Cubs Southwest starting lineup. Cubs again went 14 and 14 in the month of May, two and three on the just completed homestand. Fowler, Bryant, and Rizzo at the top. Anthony Rizzo from nearby Parkland, Florida. Jorge Soler is in right. Miguel Montero, the catcher. Starlin Castro moves from four to six, so he and Soler flip flop. The former Marlin Rookie of the Year in 2009 in the National League. Chris Coglin batting seventh. It's the pitcher Hamill eighth, and Addison Russell ninth. See uh, who's where for the fish here tonight. Uh, very young, and talented outfield. Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton, left, center, and right. Uh, Solano gets a start at shortstop. Echeverria has got a little bit of a tender shoulder. Echeverria, one of the better shortstops in all of baseball. D. Gordon has only made a couple errors at second base. Prado and Bohr cover third and first. JT Real Muto does the catching. This is a club that's only committed 20 errors this year, the fewest. In Major League Baseball, and as I mentioned, we got a rookie going to the mound uh, tonight for the Fish. Alexis, starting pitcher for Miami, Jose Urania. He's pitched three times as a big leaguer, just one start, and that did not go well. So the numbers: 0-1 with a 939 ERA. Very good numbers throughout his minor league career, including 4-0 down at AAA this year. Three pitch pitcher, fastball. I'll sit comfortably around 93 94. He can get it up to 97. A slider and a changeup. Cubs at 26 and 22. Six games back of the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Central. Cardinals are hosting Milwaukee tonight. Miami 20 and 31. Fourth place in the NL East. Eight and a half back of Washington. And Marlins just 10 and 15 here at home. 
Yeah, you got a scuffling team, a, a team that's in a little bit of a disarray. They're, they're banged up. Have to take advantage of this. So it is a switch hitting Dexter Fowler to start it. And he lines one into center for base hit. First pitch of the ball game. And the Cubs are on the hit board. And congrats. The Make a Wish Illinois via Vinny's Beverage Depot. $100 donated due to that hit by Dexter Fowler. I see the change of scenery will uh, get things going for Dexter Fowler. Really struggled on the homestand. It was one out of 20 in those five ball games. Good start here tonight. Here's Chris Bryant and first a check on the runner Fowler. 76 degrees here inside with the roof closed panels closed outside it's 83 and it was pretty humid today. Called strike 94 on the heat. From Urania. 6 3 175 signed. With the Marlins back in 2008. Out of the Dominican Republic. And fouled off first base side out of play by Chris Bryant, who scored the game winning run in the 11th after working a very hard earned walk. He went 0 2 to 4 2, which his manager always loves. And eventually would score from third on the David Ross bloop single. Well, there he is again. 0 2. We'll see how aggressive Urania is here. Brian's able to work his way back into a favorable count. Wide for a ball. It's one and two. That was the slider. Pal Hendricks will go for the Cubs tomorrow night. Left hander Brad Hand. For the Marlins. Missed again on a close one. Urania thought it was strike three. Two and two. <laughs> Bill Welke barking at the the Marlins dugout. He's getting he's getting the, the double take from this rookie pitcher who's got one major league start under his belt. And he's also hearing it from the Marlins dugout. And that one wasn't particularly close. No. Got a good look from center field. Well, oh, 2 to 3 2. Yeah. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Brian doesn't chase. Rainier's one big league start a few days ago in Pittsburgh. He allowed 10 hits, five runs, and four and two thirds. And he walked him. Yeah, chance for a little early ambush here on the rookie before he gets settled. Should be a good hand for Anthony Rizzo. The South Florida native. We we'll have a nice group of uh, family and friends here at the ballpark every night this week. Yeah, they'll make up a pretty good percentage of the entire crowd. This is very sp sparse here at, uh, we call it intimate. Intimate. Cozy. Late arriving. So an early threat two on nobody out to start the game and a swing and a miss like a change up yep, that good time. change up. Scouting report I read on him said the change up was the better of his secondary pitches the sliders are kind of a developing pitch form inconsistent. Oh and two you and I hate to, to speak in cliches and use all the trite kind of baseball things that people use but you've got a team that's as you said four and nine under their new manager you've got a young pitcher on the mound it'd be nice to set the tone early in this series and score a yeah. bunch of runs mm -hmm. early the Cubs have had so many close games 26 of their first 48 games have been decided by one or two runs. Yeah, there have been very few, just, you know, seven to two, 
What feels like kind of an easy win. Well, the Cubs are going to get on the board. That's out in the left center as Fowler comes around third. He's at the dish. Rizzo to second. It's a double. And the Cubs lead one to nothing. Welcome home, Anthony Rizzo. Fastball running away. He shoots it towards the gap in left center. Chance to put a big number on the board here in the first. Showed you those numbers in our opening graphic about the Cubs offense being down in May versus April. Rizzo did his part, had an OPS up over 1,000 in May. Last couple weeks, though, this team, the Cubs, hitting just 208 as a team. But in June, they are on fire. <laughs> they haven't made an out yet this month. Third time this season, Soler has batted cleanup. This kid's got a good arm. Long and loose. He's their number four prospect, according to Baseball America. A chopper past the pitch that's going to get a run in and it's also going to get Rizzo to third. Obviously 2 and 0 you got the cleanup guy up there. He's trying to do more damage than he did but. You'll take it a two for one an RBI ground out now Rizzo. 90 feet away with only one out. I don't think Soler was trying to go that way, but it turns out to be a quote unquote productive out. Infield in. Miguel Montero waves at strike one. So he likes that first pitch change up to left handed hitters. Started Rizzo with one, Montero gets one as well. Kick the pitch, another change. 0-2. 48 and 37 lifetime as a minor leaguer wouldn't be here. Probably wouldn't be here until the end of the year, if that, if not for the injuries to the Marlins pitching staff. Slow, steady progress through their system, jumping a level each year. Last year at Double A was 13 and 8. Is 121 ERA this season led the Pacific Coast League. Yeah, put up stellar numbers at AAA. It's not the easiest league in which to pitch either, is it? PCL. No, but I was looking at his game by games, and he's, he hasn't uh, gone to, you know, he's been in Omaha, Nashville, Memphis, Oklahoma City, so he hasn't had to do the the Vegas Colorado Springs Albuquerque part of the schedule yet. But even with that though the numbers really impressive. Infield still in to two tapped Rizzo trying to score the flip to the plate. They called him out. I thought he got his foot in. And Joe yeah, may want another look at look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm with you. It looked like he was going to be out but the tag looked a little high and with you know if there's no. Replay, nobody probably even argues this play. Underhanded shovel toss. Oh, oh man, close. Maybe he did get him. And no challenge, it appears. Yep, he got him. So two outs in the inning. Starlin Castro skies one out of play down the right field line. Down to the sixth spot. Joe trying to just take some pressure off him. 
two times yesterday he was intentionally walked ahead of David Ross in the ninth and then in the eleventh. And the ground ball. We'll talk more about that later as Zarenia actually dropped the ball but recovers in time to get Castro. Starlin's been hitting a lot of ground balls. Cubs get a couple. Marlins coming up. New manager Dan Jennings D Gordon had a career year last year and he's up the ante so far this year leading the way in batting average in MLB Prado Stanton Justin Bohr, former Cub farmhand has been red hot Marcelo Zuna's in center Christian Yelich won a gold glove last year and left he's just starting to hit had a DL stint earlier JT Real Muto has three triples Donovan Solano the shortstop and the pitcher Ureña Cubs. A line this way this evening. Coglin, Fowler, Solaire, left center, right. Big yard, a lot of room to cover out there in the outfield. Bryant Castro, Russell Rizzo in their customary positions, third to first. Montero behind the plate. Alexis starting pitcher for the Cubs tonight is the big right hander, Jason Hamill. Boy, has he ever been good. Rock solid, very dependable and consistent. Three and two of the 298 ERA. He's making his 10th start. Those are good adjectives, aren't they? Rock solid, dependable, consistent. He's been all of those things. You're right. 32 years old, 6'6, 225. Cornerman in, guarding against a possible bunt in the air, center field, and Fowler will make the catch. So D. Gordon is out and uh, didn't give us a chance to talk about the ground ball rate of this Marlins team. They hit a ton of ground balls. Gordon is a guy you want to hit the ball on the ground. If you're his manager because he runs so well, Christian Yelich, another guy hitting a ton of grounders. Yeah, I think they have the highest ground ball rate of any team in baseball. You know, Martin Prado. You don't hit it in the air, it doesn't leave the ballpark. And so they are 13th in the National League at home runs with 37. Prado in his 10th big league campaign, 31 years old. Hamill working quickly as he normally does. And that pop up will get behind the first base dugout occupied by the visitors. I think everybody enjoyed being able to throw on the sport coat and shorts after a cold weekend at Wrigley Field. Got on the plane, got off the plane. It was hot and humid here in South Florida. Right field Soler going after it. He's not going to get it. It drops for a hit. Prado on his way to second and he's got a sliding double. That's Prado's game a line drive hitter uses the whole field. Typically doesn't hit a lot of home runs. Chopped down on that fastball and carved it the other way for a one out double. Yeah. 
Hamill has pitched at least seven innings in each of his last four starts. A loser last time despite pitching well seven innings four runs allowed. Against the Diamondbacks he punched out nine walked only one. Now John Carlo Stanton. She's got that face guard. Was hit by a pitch from Mike Fires missed the final 17 games last year. And I like how they put the G into that. Uh, that face mask it almost has a, a football look to it. Two balls no strikes. Let's check out our Xfinity high speed action. Ball comes off his bat. Really fast, doesn't it? Yeah, this is uh, last year here. He took a, a slider from Hamill and hit what we thought was going to be a line drive, you know, base hit, or one hopper off the wall, and it just continued to carry. So, you, know, you see it a little bit with Chris Bryant, too. These guys are so big and strong. Balls behave differently off the bat. You know, that, that you don't see line drives hit down the line the other way on that trajectory, fly out of the ballpark. Yep. Two and one here it is from Hamill. So back to back sliders to get. Back into this at bat. Probably their hottest hitter is on deck. Justin Bohr has homered in his last three consecutive games. But he could have homered in his last 30 games and you're still going to be careful with Stan. In big spots in this series. Stan has showed a willingness to go out of the strike zone. Probably more so this year than in the past. And there you go. First strikeout for Hamill. Two down. Stanton leads the National League in strikeouts. And you can get him to chase. This is 69th punch out. Justin Bohr cuts and misses. Rule five pick from the Cubs in December 2013. 25th rounder of the Cubs out of George Mason University in 09. Michael Morse is on the disabled list. He has a finger injury. Four six four two fifty. Big home run seasons as a minor leaguer. A cup of coffee with the fish last year performed pretty well. But, uh, and most impressive here so far this year. By the way, Stanton I mentioned leading the league in strikeouts with 69 now. Jorge Soler came in second. 67. These two right fielders and headed back to the dugout empty handed a lot. Swing and a miss, and Hamill gets out of it with no damage. One out double, no runs. Two nothing Cubs after an inning.
at it against first place DC United. Coverage kicks off at 5.30 on CSN+. Plus. I had lived that. Kicks off. Get it? Oh, good one, yeah. Football. Mark up. Second inning. Cubs with a couple of runs in the first against Jose Orania. Now Chris Coughlin, the former Marlin. Big day yesterday. Three hits, a double an RBI, and a line out for the one out he made. He hit it really hard. Yeah, and what was a very difficult day to hit. Cold, wind blowing in hard. Didn't bother Coughlin in the least. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Came up through the Marlins change, and originally, as we had discussed before, was an infielder, played third and second. 36th overall pick in the 06 draft out of Ole Miss. And did you know that Chris Coughlin, when he was a senior in high school at Tarpon Springs, Florida, northwest of Tampa, had a teammate named Tyler Jennings, whose dad is the Marlins current manager. I did manager. not know that. Now you know. What a web we weave. Rookie of the year in 2009. High average hitter. Did not hit many home runs. That's been the surprising thing so far this year. The power. Backhanded play. Out of Solano. For Echeverria. Hey Cup fans. Let's go with summer right around the corner. Things are heating up at Wrigley Field. Make your plans now to catch a game. In the friendly confines. The Cubs are back home starting Thursday June 11th. It's a six game homestand. Uh, with the Reds and the Indians coming to town, get your tickets at Cubs.com. Jason Hamill, six out of 23. You know, we were talking in the open, uh, showing that comparison between April and May. Four games better than 500 in April, a 500 club in May. I would think if you were Joe Madden and you were playing that, uh, let's make a deal in one of those game shows, mm -hmm. and you could take 500 for June or what's in the box. I take my 500 for June. Well, a lot of a lot of days on the road. Yeah, yeah. a tough schedule. Yeah, 18 road games, just 10 at home in the month of June, and a pretty stiff schedule up until uh, I was looking at just a little bit ago, July 2nd or 3rd. Uh, just about everybody they play is currently above 500. Collectively, 44 games better than 500. Stretch uh, in the middle of June on three in Minnesota, then the Dodgers for four, three with the Cardinals, three in New York with the Mets. Hamill rolls it into center. I'm smelling Silver Slugger Award. He's got to pop a Papa home run though to make make some headlines. This you know single every other start business is not going to drum up enough he's, interest. He's having fun, man, playing the whole game. Getting it done on the mound and finding some success in the batter's box. Here's Russell. Swing and a miss on a slider. Ballpark opened in 2012, replacing Sun Life Stadium. I think it hit him. I got him. I heard a, I heard a sound, and it did. Get a piece of Addison Russell. Yeah, he's got very good arm side run on his two seam fastball. I was watching some video of this kid earlier today, and that ball really has a lot of run. Looks like you know, he's not afraid to to go inside on right-handed hitters. Some more traffic, and it's Fowler who took the first pitch of the ball game back into center. And Dexter needed it. He had uh, really cooled off. The average was down to 235. And 
had gone three for his last 36 with a couple of home runs. Well, you, you were talking about you, know, you look at other teams and pay attention on a day by day basis. I think sometimes for me we do this every day. You get tunnel vision and you don't you see the averages but it doesn't register. Mm -hmm. And I looked at De Dexter's today and I thought 235. Yeah. What happened. Good read by Hamill. Look at Hamill playing the game. Getting base hits taking extra bases. Nito a little late to react on that one. No hesitation by Hamill. Getting the uni dirty. And it looks like they're going to play the infield back except for Prado at third. Called that a passed ball on Real Muto. Popped up. Foul territory and the basket catch by Prado as he had to get around. Part of the uh, catcher's mat or the uh, is that the helmet? Yeah, it was uh, Muto's helmet came off. So big second out for Urania. Yeah, you know you, you're talking about Dexter struggles and the other one's Montero too. The last couple of weeks he's really struggled as well. Up to Chris Bryant now, second and third, two outs, everybody back on the infield. So this ballpark, uh, mm -hmm. they got a roof, that's the best part of it. It does look like somebody emptied the crayon box in the middle of the field and they just went to town. They got all the colors covered, don't they? Greens and blues and oranges and yellow and yeah yeah I was kind of trying to fit into the whole Miami tropical theme I, I'm you know we were talking earlier the, the the green I'm not a big fan of the, the green on the walls home run feature out there is pretty unique. They still have the fish behind on plate in the aquarium. I'm assuming so. Yeah, I think so. Might not be the same fish they had four years ago. No, I think some of them became free agents, moved on. <laughs> well, I know there was a piranha at an opt out after 2014. Here we go again. Yep. <laughs> Get ahead, nibble, nibble, nibble. Big hands, doesn't he? He's not a real big guy, 6'2, but he's got long arms, long limbs. Ooh, that was a good slide. This time he gets him. Well, Muto dropped it, so he'll have to complete the play as he does. And the inning comes to an end. Cubs strand a couple in scoring position, inning and a half in the books. They lead 2 0.
for our lows never stop improving. Let's go down on the farm. Javier Baez, terrific month of May. Matt Caesar, he's really kind of drawn the short straw, hasn't he? He's had to go back a couple of times just due to other roster circumstances, but just put his head down and kept doing what he did in spring training. Kyle Schwarber, 11 for his last 22. And Schwarber putting up some very impressive numbers down at double A. Javi Baez after a slow start has really turned things on. And yeah, Caesar doing what we expected him to do. Just keep playing hard. 20 out of 55. Marcel Ozuna fouls. Ball one strike. Hamill faced the Marlins twice last year, couple of no decisions. Seventh career start versus Miami. So Mike Goff is the new bench coach. Or Dan Jennings. Nice play down there, young man. The golf was what doing advanced scouting? He was. Brett Butler had been the third base coach. He's been reassigned. He's in the dugout now. Lenny Harris is now out there coaching third. There's Lenny. I'm a big fan of his, and not just because he's a Lenny. That helps. See in your top three, top three Lennies. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. I think he double dipped in 2003, right? He was a Cub and a Marlin, so he got playoff shares with both teams. Oh, is that right? Uh, that's savvy. You're living right when that happens. As Hamill strikes out Ozuna. That's three in a row for Hamill. After the one-out double by Prado, he got Stanton and Bohr. Ozuna can't check on the slider. Strike called on Christian Yelich. Got a seven year extension in March. Forty nine and a half million. He won the gold glove last year. Off to a slow start. He had some DL time due to a back issue, but working on an eight game hitting streak. That is a foul ball pounced on by Montero, but. It was foul. Yelich it for a good average last year. Not a lot of power. You're talking about their ground ball tendencies, and he's been uh, been the leader of the pack. 60 ground balls, nine fly balls. Would you say he's the Miami ground machine? Oh. Ho -ho. Love those dated 80s references. <laughs> yeah, and he, you know he can run a, a little bit too, not not like D. Gordon. So I'm sure the Marlins are trying to get him to drive the ball a little bit more, especially for a corner outfielder. So this is one out of play to left. Holding it three and two. I'm gonna sell out to so his little tardy on the fastball. He hit uh, 284 last year. Nine home runs. 30 doubles. First full year in the big leagues. 
Swung on and missed. Four straight for Hamill. Jason, he, he's like the big kid in Little League right now. He's getting hits, running around the bases, striking everybody out. There's that bad slider, good result right there. Well, the line is it was so bad it was good. Yeah. Stays above the happy zone. That's really good there. Just a dart down and away. Just off the outside corner, apparently. Look how quickly he's working, too. He's taking it to him. In his hurry up offense. One and one on Rio Muto. Came up with Jeff Mathis, went on the DL, then took over playing time for the struggling Jared Salta Lamacchia, who eventually was cut in late April. Real Muto, just an outstanding high school athlete, was a quarterback and a shortstop primarily. Marlon saw him catching one day because the primary catcher was was out pitching. They needed somebody to catch, and they loved his tools. They liked the, what he brought to the table in terms of his skill set. They said, "Hey, if uh, we draft you, would you consider catching?" And he said, "Sure, whatever, whatever it takes to get me to the big leagues." Just a handful of games as a catcher in high school, and he made the transition professionally. Checked his swing, rolled it to Hamill. Easy play, and the inning is over. Two of the Bucks comes lead by a pair. This game actually was in San Diego, and Andrew McCutcheon found a couple of young Pirate fans. Look at the reaction when he gave the batting gloves. You are the man, Andrew McCutcheon. I love you, man. Fans for life. Good stuff. Cubs with a couple of early runs. And at the bat once again here in the third inning. Rizzo, Soler, and Montero. Two years ago here that Anthony had the big series, wasn't it? That sounds right. Yep. From Parkland, Florida. It's north of Miami. At the Stoneman Douglas High School. Triple and a single in some big spots yesterday in the ninth, and then again in the eleventh. Well, that was a nice game to win for a lot of reasons getaway day split the series with the Royals. Yeah well and 
you go 11 innings, you use all those resources. You, you want to come away with a W. Seven guys out of the bullpen worked yesterday. Shoshiwata was a starter and he was good yet again. Five and two thirds, allowed a couple hits in a run. Justin Grimm is. Rizzo works the count to three and one. Could be a big noise coming here soon. Nope, didn't give him a pitch to hit. Get a behind the scenes look at beautiful Wrigley Field. The Cubs offered 90 minute guided tours that include a chance to step on the field. This must see Chicago attraction houses over 100 years of history. For more information, visit Cubs.com slash tours. Solaire knocked in a run with a ground out in the first inning. Digging into the numbers a little bit today on uh, Jorge, his uh, batting average on balls at play, 397. That is probably unsustainable. Uh, his line drive percentage, well above average, that helps a lot. And I think. One thing about the the balls in play is that hopefully some of his line drives start to leave the field of play and go over the fence. That's a double play ball. Taylor made six to four to three. Well, that's the other part about that batting average of balls in play. Not only does he have a high line drive rate, but when he hits it on the ground, he usually hits it hard too. Um, just not a lot of weak contact. There's a lot of swing and miss in his game, but not a lot of weak contact when he hits it. He usually hits it hard. And unfortunately for him, that time it was the hard that made the double play easy. A lot of pace on that ground ball turns into an easy 6 4 3. Yeah, so, you know, some with some hitters you, you, with that, that high batting average and balls in play, you say, oh man, he's due to regress. I don't think in his case that there's a regression. Necessarily on the horizon, maybe in his batting average, that could go down. But I think some of the power numbers could 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 go up. Yeah, I think you know it's just it's just a matter of time before he gets more comfortable at this level, has a better feel for how they're pitching him, starting to, tight, to tighten up, or as Joe Joe uses the term, organize the strike zone better. Two one to Montero, and now it's two and two. Uh, and you're right; he's cooled off quite a bit. He's four for his last 34. As he bats with two outs and nobody on, and a swing and a miss. Four strike three. Midway in the third, two to nothing, Cubs.
all season long on Comcast Sportsnet. Brought to you by Nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. Visit Jeff at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. A lot of Cub fans in the ballpark tonight. That group just enjoying some chow. Patrick Mooney will be by tomorrow with his insights. Yeah, I need today to work on the tan here on South Beach. Donovan Solano, whose brother, Jonathan, is a backup catcher for the Marlins. Solano in for Danny Echeverria, who's dealing with a bruised left shoulder. Collided with Christian Yelich on Friday in New York. One ball, two strikes, Hamill to the plate. Swing and a miss, strike three. Eight batters in, he's got five strikeouts, all swinging. A very crisp slider tonight. Strike two was the slider, and then he threw 92 mile an hour fastball by Solano. Memory of that slide ball fresh in his mind, late to the fastball. Now the pitcher, Urania. Dan Jennings hit the pitcher eight yesterday in New York. Bounce to Castro. Urania runs well. He got down the line quickly. And Starlin throws him out. Are you in charge of planning your next social gathering? Plan a day at Wrigley Field and enjoy special perks only available inside the ballpark. The Chicago Cubs offer special ticket packages for groups of 15 or more. Visit Cubs.com slash groups. Are you the family uh, social coordinator? Uh, I am not. I'm usually just along for the ride. Strike called on D. Gordon, son of former Cubs pitcher Tom Flash Gordon. I think being the family coordinator takes a level of decisiveness that I don't possess. You know, like when the waitress asked you, do you want patties or links? That completely locks me up. I'm good for about 20 minutes before I can even answer that one. Yeah, you're more of the uh, uh, sure. Oh, yeah, that guy. sounds good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm in. But you are agreeable, and I, I, I give you that. It's a good trait. You know what you are? You're rock solid, dependable. <laughs> What's the word you used to describe Hamill? Jason has been very good here early on, leading two to nothing.
Take the ball as the Cubs and the Marlins match up in game two of this three game series. Join us for the call starting at six right here on Comcast Sportsnet. I guess June 1st is the official start of hurricane season. And it goes through what October November. Yeah it goes through November the fall. So 2004 uh, when we lived here um, and Cup fans will remember that the series that was canceled here and had to make it up to, in Chicago. They had two hurricanes that had the same touchdown point here on the east coast of Florida three weeks to like the minute apart. Fouled out of play. Marlins had to play at 30 games their final 27 days and the Cubs were like 24 in their last 22. Is that Andrew? It was Andrew No, Andrew that. was in the early 90s. This would have been uh, Francis and Gene maybe. Usually alphabetical mm -hmm. so that sounds right to me. Hurricanes are not fun. You know, it sounds like a sexy storm. It is not. It can obviously be very deadly. At mm -hmm. the very least, it's really inconvenient. Yeah. Because people well, lose power. Yeah. Everything goes bad in your refrigerator. And usually hurricanes happen where it's really hot and humid. Stanton into the right field corner, and he's got it. Speaking of... Uh, Hurricanes. Was it Hurricane Ike? It forced the uh, Astros and Cubs to play at Miller Park. Correct. And Carlos Zambrano pitched a no hitter. And the story is that you, without lights, grabbed a, two different shoes? Yes. Yeah. Went through the airport and they, they opened up a lane for us at Intercontinental Airport in Houston. And I, when I took my shoes off, I had two different shoes. Similar in color, but not identical. But I put it's a, today is Carlos Sambrano's birthday, so oh. happy birthday to Big Z. He's 34. Happy birthday, 34 years old. And Randy Hundley also celebrating a birthday today. Randy is 73. Well, this kid, when you look at his minor league numbers, was a winning pitcher, good ERA. So he's not a big strikeout pitcher. Um, I think that will come as he learns to, to work with his study. His pure stuff is really good. Uh, sliders had very good bite tonight. We've seen the changeup. He's used to the left-handed hitters. He's thrown the fastball 95 miles an hour at times. So the combination of pitches is there for him to be more of a strikeout type pitcher. Best news for the Marlins is that uh, Jose Fernandez is on his way back. He pitched today uh, against Marlin minor leaguers in their extended spring program through three innings, struck out seven, including the last six he faced, and he got to 97 on the gun. So he's going to start on a rehab assignment here in a few days. Pulled deep and foul. Uh, just to cap the hurricane thought there were four hurricanes that hit Florida in 2004 and I think within about a six week span and uh, the two that hit the same area was were Francis and Gene J E A N N E. Uh, Charlie Francis Ivan and Gene. And just when you're starting to recover from one boom here comes yep, another exactly. one. Exactly. Pitch. Outside, it's full. This kid's got some very interesting body language for a guy making his second big league start. He's pretty brash. He's staring at Bill Welke. I don't think he'll do him any good. 
And I would imagine somebody uh, will remind him of that in the dugout. It's a pretty young club. Guys in their early to mid 20s. Pitch of the at bat and it's taken low and out of the zone for ball four. Hey, Cup fans, let's go. Don't miss your chance to catch the best matchups in baseball. Reserve your place in line for history in the making. Join the season ticket holder waiting list. It's easy and free to register. For details, go to Cubs.com slash waitlist. Hamill bunts foul. Just going to say he's going to be the first cup pitcher to get one down successfully. Or he's going to bunt another one foul and then hit a two run homer. I was kind of surprised he was bunting right there to tell you the truth with one out in the inning the way the Cubs have played it and been pretty aggressive. Having their pitcher swing early and then bunt late when he was up there showing bunt with that very first pitch. He looks hitterish right now. Tap toward third. Prado decided to field it and he will get Hamill. And it goes five to three. No sacrifice because he swung away, but same result. Was it going to roll foul? Yeah, uh, Prado. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, I think Prado gave it as long as he could. You know, he. Great instincts there. He knows with Hamill going down the line, he's got a little time to watch it roll. So Coglin in scoring position and Russell who got Clipped by a pitch in his first at bat, took another one inside. He is from Florida, but from Pensacola, which is way north. From here, that is. It's not way north compared to the rest of the country. Suspect he's got some family on hand though for this series. Watch him get an RBI knock right here on 2 0. Right on cue, Coglin around third. Stanton will not make a throw to the plate. Nice call, partner. 3 0 Cubs. That was good when they read the script. Stayed on that fastball. Exploited that hole on the right side. Coughlin moving with the swing with the two outs, scores easily. Let's see if he's inclined to try to steal a base here. Called strike. Couple of games washed out already. Blue Jays and Nationals postponed. Twins Red Sox as well. Brewers Cardinals just getting underway. Fires and Garcia in that one. Dodgers are at the Rockies a little bit later on. Braves D backs. Good one out in San Francisco. Pirates and the Giants. Garrett Cole, Ryan Vogelsong. Cole's been good all year long. Vogelsong's been really good of late. See a Joey Gallo coming to the big leagues. 
the Texas Rangers. Another Vegas kid. Prodigious power. Rangers are a game above 500 now. Eight and two in their last ten. And a walk-off hit from Josh Hamilton. Was that yesterday's ball game? It was yesterday, yeah. yep. Off the bench, in fact. Right down the left field line, and it lands foul by a couple of feet. Hey, do they still have Billy the Marlin here? I think I they do. Him. Where yeah. is he? They should. I haven't seen Billy. Oh, there he is. There he is down at the end of their dugout. There's been a lot of change, so I wasn't sure. But maybe Billy. Billy got reassigned. He's flirting. He's got a new fin. Automatic go here for Russell on 3 2. There's the, the new look, Billy the Marlin. Call strike three to end the inning. Good vacation spot here in South Florida, but the Cubs are all business. In town starting at six with Blackhawks pregame live and flip to CSN Plus after game one for dressing room reaction, highlights, and a whole lot more on Blackhawks post game live. Stanley Cup final game one coverage starts at six on CSN Chicago. Jason Hamill has it working tonight. And he's got a three run cushion as well. Five strikeouts, no walks. And as he faces Martin Prado. Prado, the only Marlin with a hit, a bloop double down the right field line in the first inning. That is a strike. So with the five punch outs now, Jason Hamill has 63 strikeouts and seven walks, and one of those walks intentional. Yeah, you know, he's 32 years of age. It's not uh, unusual for a pitcher at that age to, to start to decline. But he's doing his best work here. Last year in this in a Cub uniform, he's been really something. Rado vacated that front door slider, almost came back over the plate, two and two. Jason with the Cubs last year had a 298 ERA in 17 starts. Identical to his ERA this year through nine. 
that numbers for Prado, including his one for one tonight against Hamill. The three, two. Coglin makes the catch on that liner. That was a much better swing by Prado than first time up. Went right on the screws. But he's out. Leaked over the fat part of the plate on Jason. Here's Stanton. Led the National League with 37 homers last year. Even though, as we mentioned, his season ended early in Milwaukee. Boy, was that Ooh. scary. I'm sorry, I was just. I was that was the pitch, yeah. One and one. Facial uh, fractures, dental damage, took some stitches after he got hit by that high hard one from Mike Fires. Look at that. That line shot stayed up, but Soler had to play it cautiously. Yeah, you know, and in hindsight, he might have been able to come in and catch that ball, but you just don't, again, you don't expect the ball to carry that far on a line. He ends up having to back up on it a little bit like an infielder would. He sits so sharply and he's kind of bewildered out yeah. there right now. I think he is a little baffled that that ball stayed in the air as long as it did. Stanton thought about it, decided to hold it first. Well, so a little bit of a predicament here for Hamill with a man on and bore up there has really been swinging it well and is very dangerous. Home runs in three straight games. It should Michael Morse who would be playing first base just about every day is on the DL. This time Stanton got a better read and he's going to make it. Well that looked like Stanton was upset at himself that he didn't go the first time that pitch was in the dirt so he. Was bound and determined that time to go. See how. Big his secondary lead was not his primary lead wasn't big but a couple big strides coming off with the pitch well positioned to take advantage of that ball in the dirt. Eight time two and zero oh on four now two and one. So did you know that okay Morse is on the deal with a right ring finger strain. Jeff Mathis has a fractured right ring finger. Don Kelly has a fractured right ring finger and I think Kelly and Mathis got hurt in the same game. Really. Three guys out with a same injury. Jason running. Stanton takes off for third. Throw goes into left. He's going to take off to the plate and he's going to score. It'll be a stolen base and an error on Montero, and the Marlins get a run. Stanton, the slugger, in the role of igniter here, taking second on the. Wild pitch now stealing third and then coming home on the air and throw from Montero. Certain amount of risk there down three with a home run hitter in the box, but it works out for him. So three and one. Now full. Do it again.
He got him. For strikeout number six. Swung through a high fastball last time up did Bohr. This time even a little higher. How many pitchers, really catchers too, I guess, it's, it's a, a team effort, are good at reading swings? Instead of just the scouting report, JD, going by what you see in an at bat, getting a guy, look, you can't hit this pitch, I'm going to do that again. Yeah, I don't know. And that, uh, I had a conversation with David Ross when we were in Phoenix about that very thing. He said, you know, because we were talking about the little arm thing he wears out there with the scouting report on it. Got a ball into center, Ozuna keeps the inning alive. And a lot of times on the scouting report, it'll have you know the best way to start a hitter and the best way to finish a hitter. First ball, breaking ball, or you know down and away to finish up and in, or you know whatever it is. And he said you know, he really likes having that that he can refer to. But what he really likes to do is as the game develops, get a sense of what hitters, how hitters are reacting to a pitcher's stuff that night. If the guy's on the fastball or not. So I think it's you know I think especially a veteran guy who's been around a while he has to have that freedom to make that call. I mean you come out you come into a game with a game plan that says you need to pitch this guy hard in early and you get him out soft away say well maybe over the course of the game he's seeing something different from the hitter he's got to have the freedom to be able to make that adjustment. I'm sure there's you know ongoing conversations in the dugout all the time. Uh, hey, here's here's what we got on this guy, but this is what I'm seeing. I think we can finish him, you know, a different way. Ball one on Yelich. The problem from the pitcher's point of view is hitters are always making adjustments. So just because you beat a guy one way in one at bat doesn't mean he's going to be vulnerable to the same thing next time. One and one on Yelich. Mentioned Yelich signed now for a long extension. We'll go through 2021. And coincidentally, he'll turn 21. He's 23. Doesn't look a day over 14, does he? He is very yeah. youthful. Look, Christian Yelich. Yeah, and obviously they like this kid for his defense as well as his offensive skill set, and they have to like the makeup. You wouldn't sign a young kid to that long of a deal. With his lack of experience, unless you really believed in the player. And the person. I think that's part of, you know, the decision. Uh, I think a big part of the decision to have the general manager now in the dugout is that you know, he does have a good relationship with all of these players. It's a different one now, however, because the, the big boss is now your manager. That does change the dynamic, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got to feel, it, feel a little weird in that clubhouse. And he, that guy, if he's going to keep this job, he's got a lot of work to do to earn the players' trust on this level. You know, he's the guy in the suit and tie from upstairs that they've had dealings with on a certain level. Now he's in the clubhouse day after day after day with them, and, you know, riding the ups and downs that are part of a baseball season. It's, it's a little different animal down there. And Jennings is in the Professional Baseball Scouts Hall of Fame, by the way. As Yelich rifles one the other way, Ozuna was on the move, and he's going to get in at third. This inning doesn't want to end. First and third. The real Muto coming up. Yelich has had some really good games against the Cubs in his young career. That's what I remember about right there. Just a good solid approach at the plate. Not a home run hitter, but take a pitch away and hit it the other way. You are correct. He came in uh, 429 in six career games against the Cubs. 
It's interesting, you know, normally when you see a guy start to give up some hard contact after he's been dominating, well, second time through the order, third time through the order, it's typical. But Jason Hamill, it is not typical. Batting average against him actually goes down each time through the order, which is really impressive. Third time through, we're not there yet. The opposing batters are hitting just 154 against Hamill this year. That's one of the best uh, marks in all of baseball for a starting pitcher. The corners with two outs, a run in. Real Muto, I think, went. He did on appeal. Sent Sam Holbrook down at first. Yeah, let's four out of five in the stolen base department. Strike two. Somebody needs to mic up all the first basemen around baseball and record the conversations, turn it into a documentary. First base conversations. Got to pay homage to uh, Sean Casey, though, who's retired. He had to be the all timer, right? <laughs> the mayor the down mayor, there yeah. at first. There goes Yelich, and Real Muto chased the bad one, and that will end the inning. But they do get on the board. It's three to one Cubs after four. will have a new look and feel with additional amenities and more group spaces. Tickets are on sale now. Visit Cubs.com slash bleachers to buy tickets and learn more about the new spaces and concessions as they become available over the next few months. Above Marlins Park. This is the old Orange Bowl site here in Miami. John Carlos Stanton makes headlines with his bat. Doing it with his uh, with his legs, single moved to second on a wild pitch, stole third, scored on an error by Miguel Montero. So now three to one, and it's two, three, and four for the Cubs, starting with Chris Bryant. Stanton went back, now sets and makes the grab, one away.
Baseball's in good hands. Moving forward with all this young talent. Bryce Harper. Anthony Rizzo. John Carlos Stanton. Mike Trout. Bartolo Cologne. <laughs> Which is the beautiful thing about baseball. I mean, look at look at Stanton out there is this Adonis. And then you got 42 year old Roly Poly Bartolo Colon who leads the league with eight wins. Beautiful thing about this game. Jose Altuve over there in the American League doing his thing at 5 2. Center field Ozuna. That's Rizzo. Cubs have made uh, Rania work awfully hard here tonight, but two quick outs here in the fifth. Milwaukee with an early run in St. Louis, bottom one, one zip Brewers. They had a long one yesterday. Uh, 17, 17 innings. Jonathan Lucroy back in the Brewers lineup, hitting second. 16 and a half games back as play begins on June 1st. Well, they're 17 and 34, and the Cardinals are 33 and 17. Another ball on the ground off the bat of Soler. Prado, close, but they got him. And that'll end the Cubs' fifth. Halfway home on a Monday night, 3 1. It's three to one. The rain has gotten better as the night has gone along. And Hamill gave up uh, three hits and a run in the fourth inning. And ball one on Solano. He's in that uh, pitcher's sweet spot right here with eight, nine, one scheduled to bat for the fish.
the pitcher on deck. In front of the aquarium. Right field Soler is over and it drops foul. Like a little Michael Pineda Felix Hernandez matchup tonight. Yankees and Ooh, Mariners later. Yeah. Pineda six and two. Felix eight and one with a one ninety one. It'll be Pineda's first start since he was traded from Seattle to the Yankees. Yankees tied for first at 26 and 25 with the Rays. Tightly bunched group, the AL East. Red Sox in last place, four back. Foul tip, strike three. I'm willing to swing at that high heater tonight, man. Check out the Legends Suite located on the New Veen Investment Suite level. Watch the game with a former Cubs player. Listen to classic stories about life as a Cub with a luxury food and beverage package and a unique gift for each guest. The Legends Suite is the most exclusive way to watch a Cubs game. For more info, go to Cubs.com slash suites. One and one. Another good matchup late tonight. Zarania tried to bunt, missed it. Jacob DeGrom, Andrew Kashner, Mets, and the Padres in San Diego. Got a lot of games to watch later tonight. Mm -hmm. Atlanta's in Arizona, too. I'm firing up my MLB.tv. Yeah, Tampa Bay at the Angels. The West Coast is chock full of matchups as Jason Hamill has struck out half the batters he's faced tonight. That's nine punch outs. He had nine last time. Not sure exactly what Urania was trying to accomplish there, but it did not look real pretty. His career high is 10. He's done that three times. Last time he did it was June of 2012. He has not gotten Gordon yet. Line out, ground out. Gordon acquired from the Dodgers in December. Led the majors last year with 64 steals and 12 triples. This year leading. All major league hitters in batting average and hits. Very difficult. Well, pretty well impossible to sustain what he had going early. Really dropped off in May, didn't he? 351. Mm -hmm. Castro nice. makes a catch. Starlin robs D. Gordon. Uh, what might have been two bases with the way he runs. Yeah, well, even if not, he's probably going to steal second, so probably took away extra bases.
liner by D. Gordon. And he'll bat second here in the Cubs sixth. A good read, great timing as he left his feet to put it away. Very nice. Here's Montero to start it. Cubs got two in the first, added a run in the fourth. Play 0 and 2. You mentioned Jose Fernandez working his way back. Uh, hit 97 today, pitching up in Jupiter, Florida. It's her spring training home. 42 pitches. Yeah, that's why it was kind of unfair to Mike Redmond to get dumped the way he did with all the injuries they've had, especially to the pitching staff. Bullpen has really struggled. Well, that would be a nice boost. And they get Fernandez back, even though you don't want to count too heavily on a guy coming back that first year from Tommy John. Full count after an 0 2 start. So we mentioned this possibility yesterday and it, it did come to pass going into the month of June. The Minnesota Twins and the Houston Astros both leading. Their respective divisions. And as J.D. mentioned we will see the Twins later this month in Minneapolis 30 and 19. The Astros are 31 and 20 and they've got a four game lead. Over in the AL West second largest lead. Behind the Cardinals six game advantage in the NL Central. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if those two upstarts can continue to play this well. Slicing drive to left. Yelich has it. A lot of baseball yet to be played. Saw what happened with Milwaukee Brewers last year. They led the Central Division here in the National League for about five months. But it's been a great story what's gone on with Houston. Rangers surging now too. Astros in the third hosting the Orioles tonight. And they are scoreless. Brett Oberholzer for the Astros Ubaldo Jimenez. For Baltimore. League play. We will see the American League Central. We've already seen the Royals. We got Detroit on this trip. Can't get on top of that high fastball. What's going on in the AL Central? There's the Twinkies. 11 games better than 500. Yeah, last place team is within a, a series sweep of getting to 500. Call strike three. It's number four for Urania, whose uh, night may be ending fairly soon as it's close to 100 pitches. Well, pretty good work there. A couple of high fastballs that Castro couldn't get on top of, and then got him looking at a tight little slider. He's just gone over the century mark, 101 and counting. Ground to Gordon, short throw, and Coglin's out. 
Cubs are done. Seven in a row now retired by Arrhenius. Follow the Cubs all season with MLB.com at bat. That bat is up to the moment. At any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Strike on Martin Prado. Two strikes. Well, that slider's been really good tonight. Looks like that's it for the young right-hander. Getting an attaboy from his pitching coach Chuck Hernandez. Soler. Makes a catch on the move in the right field corner. Uh, Jason got a little sloppy, or sloppy, excuse me, with that slider, got away with it. So there, with a little bit of a misread, able to make an adjustment and haul it in. Stanton with one out. Slider didn't slide much. Right down the middle. One and one. Interesting when you look at the Cubs outfielders. Solaire is actually deeper in right on the offside than Coughlin is on the pull side and left. We figure if he, if he pulls it in the air to left, he's probably out of the ballpark. No play for Montero. James Russell getting loose. I think this is where Stanton has become a little bit more aggressive this year than last. Deep counts 
looking to do damage. He's been chasing pitches out of the zone. Foul ball. Lenny Harris trying to sell it to the third base umpire John Hirschbeck, and he was not buying. He's actually drifting out to try to cover the outside part of the plate. Still quick enough to pull the hands in and get the barrel to that inside fastball. Fastball in. Now they try to paint down and away. He fights that one off. The chase pitch here is the slider, but that also could be the walk pitch. And with the two run lead, Hamill, at least for the last couple pitches, willing to try the heater. There he goes. Got him on a pitch in the dirt for his 10th punch out. So he gets zero free passes. Impressive work here by Hamill tonight. Ties a career high now with 10 strikeouts. Let's go pitch by pitch through the at bat with Stanton. Sloppy with the slider gets back into it with a good fastball. No chase there on one and one. And a bit of a hanger. Sometimes you need a little good fortune. And then the battle is on, trying to get him to chase the high heater. Stanton won't bite. Fights off a tough one. Finishes him off with a good slider. That slider's been money for Hamill here tonight. In time 0 and 1. Swinging strike on board is started. Next one, another cut and a miss on a slider. Or has punched out twice, both times swinging at high fastballs. Show him one more down, perhaps, before trying to climb the ladder on him. Pep talked to himself. Come on, make a pitch. Making his tenth start of the season. First time he's gotten into double digits. Last three starts, eight strikeouts, nine, and now ten. Swing and a miss, number eleven. And he carries a three-one lead into the late innings.
Cubs lead 3-1 here in the seventh. A Chicago Comcast Sportsnet has the most Stanley Cup and final coverage in town throughout the series between the Hawks and the Lightning. Tune into Sportsnet Central for Luke Stuckmeyer's live reports and the Road to a Dynasty series every night, all series long on CSN Chicago. And Jason Hamill lines the D. Gordon Hamill setting a new career high on the mound with his 11 strikeouts. As he just faced Vin Mazzaro, who is now in from the Marlins bullpen. Mazzaro's only worked three times here for the big club. And he had 11 appearances with their Triple A team, and then Allens. We've seen him over the last couple of years with the Pirates. Ball one on Addison Russell hit by a pitch in the second RBI single in the fourth quality start for Urania six innings four hits three runs. Best he can hope for is a no decision tonight. The zero from the stretch. And a 2 0 delivery on the outside corner. Now, Rania, uh, impressive, just 23 years of age. It's really good stuff. As he develops a field of pitch. Looks like they've got a pretty good one on their hands. Ozuna over in the right center. Justin Grimm. Heating up. Almost throwing right into your living room. Outside on Fowler. Change up at 91. A little hard change up. Maybe a two seamer. Whatever it did, it had good tailing action on it. There's the change at 87. Two balls and a strike. Bryant on deck. Cubs lead 3 1. In this tough patch that Fowler's been going through, he's just been he's been laid on a lot of fastballs. Got beat by that heater. A lot of drift. And sometimes you get those shots from the side, and you see a lot of movement towards the front of the batter's box, and it tends, you know, the, causes the hands to drag. When guys go through that, they'll really work hard to make sure they get that front foot down early. Kind of lock in and then just kind of explode the hands through the strike zone. He walked him. So on for the second time tonight. Instruction from former. Marlins coach and uh, interim manager Brandon Hyde. Might have been a box.
Think he just spun on that back foot. No, he's all right. Quick. The uh, the reaction in the baseball community to the hiring of Dan, Dan Jennings to manage the, the Marlins has been interesting. Kind of like that old line. Uh, uh, hate the sin, love the sinner. <laughs> it's kind of Everybody right. here that knows Dan, oh, he's a great guy, great person, yep. good baseball man. But just about everybody in the industry said, no, bad idea, Marlins. Shouldn't have done it. Yeah, he coached in high school long ago. But most of his baseball career has been spent in personnel scouting. Yeah, originally with the uh, Reds back in the mid 80s as a scout. It is an interesting experiment. Um, they didn't say he's the interim guy. They basically said he's going to he's going to manage until the end of the year. Still paying Ozzie Guillen. There's obviously have to pay Mike Redman for a couple more years. Fowler runs. Bryant drives one into the left field corner. It's going to one hop the barrier. Fowler will come around third. He will score. It's four to one Cubs. Chris Bryant with his 33rd RBI. We're making the Marlins pitchers pay for their walks tonight. They've walked four. Three of them have come around to score. Bryant likes Stanton can hit those long line drives. And it's Rizzo now with Bryant at second. Ball one. The go ahead RBI double in the very first inning. Yeah, I think the other thing about the the hiring of Dan Jennings, it, 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 it's two parts. It's the speed of the game and all the strategic stuff as oh. Rizzo hits right into the shift. Solano playing almost behind second. And then there's the other stuff about motivating players, which we'll get into later. Four to one as it comes out to the lead.
his contributions offensively around the infield tonight. Defensively from the shortstop, Scarlett Casco, the nice grab to Rob D. Gordon earlier. So four to one. As Jason Hamill continues on. And Cubs making the most of their five hits. Just across four runs. Take advantage of the walks. And Jason Hamill has been uh, on top of his game here tonight. Lazuna well, looks at ball one low. Grimm and Russell were up uh, earlier separately. Swing and a miss. That's probably been his best pitch tonight, that slider. Yeah, well, yeah, the, the slider and the action on that slider is really sharp. And he's got a lot of swings at elevated fastballs, too. Astro gets a Sunday hot and the throw in the dirt, but his first baseman helps him out. Hamill's been interesting. You look at his, his game by game, it's tough to put in a box. There are some games where he gets a lot of fly ball outs, there are other games where he gets a lot of ground ball outs. Well, he's getting a lot of strikeouts. One and one to Yelich. League was hitting just 217 against Jason coming into this start. This is a whip. 0.91 was among the best in baseball. It's walks plus hits per innings pitched. Back door on the slider. Two and two. Round ball. Castro boots it. Starting to think a little bit. He's had a number of miscues here lately in the field. A lot of them on fairly routine plays. Made a really nice play on that floating line drive earlier this time. Relatively routine ground ball just eats him up. Now the catcher, Rio Muto, is grounded out and struck out. Double play in order as Hamill checks on the runner. The pitchers in Major League Baseball who had a lower whip than Jason Hamill coming into play tonight Zach Granke, Max Scherzer, Shelby Miller, and Felix Hernandez. That's a good group. Twenty thousand nine hundred sixty four the paid crowd. And you see a good amount of Cup fans in the ballpark. See if we can get Castro off the hook here a little ground ball for a double play. We're doing a little reading on this a real Muto kid here today talked about his athleticism earlier. How he was late to catching, but his sisters both were catchers in college. From a very athletic family, had an uncle that wrestled in the Olympics. And he 
Fouls out of play. Ryan Morris with the Miami bullpen. Muto is from Oklahoma to Carl Albert High School in Midwest City, Oklahoma. There's the ground ball, not hit terribly hard. They'll get one, and that's it. Yep, that's a smart play there. Don't try to do anything silly. You make a hero play and get nobody. Sharply hit enough to get two. Solano, ball one. This will be it for Hamill. Trying to finish strong here. Already is high for the year in pitch count. Fourth time he's gone over a hundred. Ichiro is on deck. Apparently that cracked fingernail he was dealing with not an issue for Jason tonight. Yeah he was pushed back uh, from Saturday to Sunday due to that fingernail issue was deemed minor anyway and then you had the rain out so he actually got a couple of extra days. And, and that it's on his middle finger and that's that's where he applies the pressure for his slider. Slider's been an out pitch for him, so it's like that's behind him. But you could literally say he gave the slider the middle finger today. Just too good. I could get away with saying that and be accurate. That ball is going to oh, drop for a hit. A bloop single for Solano, and that might be it for Jason. Trying to get that elusive third out here in the seventh. Yeah, the air cost him some bullets. Giro announced, and Joe's going to make the move. So we're going to have a Weber sauces and seasonings call to the pen. Why grill with anything else? Jason Hamill, terrific once again tonight. Yeah, we talked about him at the outset. He's been dependable, reliable, consistent. The word we didn't use was dominating, but that's what he was tonight. We'll be back in a moment.
losses and seasonings called to the pin. Veteran left-hander James Russell to face left-handed hitting Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro, 41 years old, future Hall of Famer. Almost 2,900 hits in the big leagues. Over 4,000 when you add them all up in Japan in the major leagues. And he'll bat with runners at the corners. And got a lot of playing time while Yelich was hurt. He's also been their most often used pinch hitter. He's 5 out of 19 in the pinch. 4,155 career hits. 1278 in Japan, 2877 in the big leagues. Talking to people around this Marlins club, he, he's really enjoying himself. Let me see Hamill's line at the moment, not yet final. With the two runners still on. It's a patented swing out on the front foot. The hands stay back. Two row. 242 hits his first year in the States. 2001 Mariners. Over 200 hits from 2001 to 2010. Every year. Round ball to Russell. This will get the Cubs out of the seventh. An error, a hit, no runs. Four to one. Courtesy bike check and for drivers the Cubs provide free parking and shuttle service on night and weekend games from 3900 North Rockwell for details visit Cubs.com Right hander Brian Morris Here in the eighth inning the Cubs leading four to one Morris uh, Mid 90s heater Slider, he'll cut his fastball. It was a four and a two seamer. Like Mazzaro, he's a former pirate. Big league time with them in uh, 2012. A cup of coffee that year. And then steady work the next couple of seasons. Last year, split time between the Pirates and the Fish. Working from the stretch. Soler hits one hard and it's flagged down by D. Gordon for the out. There's Soler again making solid contact. But 
Tough 0 for 4 for him tonight, all four times on the ground, including a double play. He does have an RBI. Babbitt will be coming down a little bit. 97 for Morris on the swing and miss by Montero. On the ground right to Solano, the shortstop. Cubs with only a couple of hits since the second inning, but they've had a couple of walks in there. Those hits were RBI hits with two outs. Pedro Strope getting loose. Adrian Beltre is going to the DL. That's what's getting Joey Gallo to the big leagues for the Texas Rangers. Sprain left thumb with Beltre. Astro waits on a 1 1 drill to deep left way back there and it will go a home run 5 to 1. Redemption. Number four for Castro. Again, it comes with two outs. Not an RBI single this time, but a long ball. Whatever it was, slider, off speed pitch, it floated up there, hung there for Castro. And well, he put a good swing on it. There's your four home run replay. It was first since May 8th. And a little more insurance. Ground ball towards center. Coughlin is on. Baxter for Russell. Well, we thought he had won the game last or uh, yesterday, late in the afternoon, that cold day at Wrigley Field. He drove one deep to left, the warning track. Yeah, he put a pretty good charge in that ball, and on many days I would have flown out of here. Or there. We're not there anymore. We're here. All the places you'll go. Here, there, and everywhere. The 0 1 to Baxter misses. One ball, one strike. Marlins bullpen uh, collectively a 391 ERA, 10th in the National League. They've had a lot of leads get away. Steve Ciszek, who was their closer, has lost that job. Line drive base hit out of the left center. Coglin tried for third and he'll get there without a throw. Three straight two out hits. First base hit as a cuff for Mike Baxter. And he almost forgot to look at the dugout and rub his helmet, as is the custom. Good swing. To get that first one out of the way, 
After an 0 for 8 start. Actually, it's his first hit in two years in the big leagues. He went 0 for 7 as a Dodger last year. Russell went around too far. According to Sam Holbrook, strike one. Have been just okay here as of late. Five and seven in their last 12, but trying to win their second in a row. And as JD mentioned off the top, the schedule this month is very difficult. A lot of road games, a lot of teams that were in the playoffs last year. So it would be nice to get this uh, road trip off to a good start here in Miami. And so far, so good, leading five to one. Russell chases. The inning is over. Starlin Castro with his fourth home run. And career hit number 899. Cubs lead 5 to 1. Cap, thank you. Castro with a home run to make it five to one. Here's Pedro Strope. Maybe his best outing of the year yesterday. A nine pitch, one, two, three inning with a couple of strikeouts against Kansas City. It had been a bit of a bumpy ride for him of late. Yeah, right now at 391. Pretty solid numbers there. A punch outs. A hop knocked down by Russell. Nice play. They get Gordon. That was pretty fancy. A little mishandle. The ability to grab it before it hit the ground. Gordon down the line. If that ball gets to the ground, he might beat it.
Toronto was traded. As he bounces this one up the middle. Russell will throw late. Toronto with his second hit tonight. Been traded a couple of times in the last two years. Still working on that four year deal he signed with Arizona. And he's aboard for Stanton. And we've seen uh, Russell go up the middle and make a number of plays to the backhand side. This time he doesn't get it cleanly, and even if he does, I don't know if he's going to be able to get Prado. Well, and you can see Prado moved again, too, couldn't you? A guy that would bring value at the trade deadline if the fish were so inclined. Came into the season with high expectations. Still just June 1st, a lot of baseball to be played. They may feel like they can get back in it. Bounce to Bryant. They get one. They get two around the horn to end the inning. 5 1 comes as we go to the ninth. Time series deadlocked at 86 apiece going into the series, dating back to 1993. The Marlins joined the National League along with the Rockies. Morris gave up a run on three hits in the eighth. And ball low on Dexter Fowler. Two and zero oh the count. Milwaukee continues to lead at St. Louis one to nothing. They play the bottom of the fifth. We'll see Travis Wood in the bottom of the ninth. Dodgers with a 2 0 lead at Colorado after three. Andre Ethier and Jimmy Rollins. 
have homered for the Dodgers. Both over 400 feet. It's uh, Kershaw pitching for the Dodgers tonight. Kershaw and Kendrick. As Morris comes back and strikes out Fowler. Jordan Lyles to the Rockies DL sprained toe. He's been on the DL a bunch here the last couple of years. Called strike one and one on Bryant. Rizzo on deck. Cubs have led. Since Rizzo's double, three batters into the ballgame. Ryan has looked good at the plate tonight. One out of three, walked and scored, double drove in a run. That was in the seventh. This time, strikeout number three for Morris. Todd Frazier, the National League Player of the Week for last week. Josh Donaldson over in the American League. Donaldson hit six home runs. Yeah. <laughs> sort of absurd numbers. Frazier hit 511 out of 22 six games last week for the Reds. Mm. A healthy rip by the young lad. He had a rocket last time up. All right to Solano, whose position. Well, exactly where he is now, out there behind second base. Ground ball right back to the mound. Morris will get him. A one, two, three top of the ninth. Three outs to go, leading five to one.
of the game. And Jason Hamill, as we mentioned, pushed back due to the cracked fingernail, but as good as we've seen him. And we've said that a few times this year, haven't we? Yeah, he's been uh, really outstanding. And tonight, dominant with 11 strikeouts. He did not walk a single batter. Just a ton of swings and misses. All these strikeouts swinging the elevated fastball, the sharp fighting slider, his two primary weapons tonight. And the occasional curveball, but powerful performance by Hamill here tonight. Seven consecutive starts now, allowing five hits or fewer. It's the longest such streak in MLB. So Hamill to Russell to Strope to Wood. Trying to finish him off. And a former Cub, Jeff Baker. To bat for four. Travis came into the ball game yesterday, faced a couple batters, allowed a hit and a walk. Not retire anybody through eight pitches. Edwin Jackson, the only member of the Cubs bullpen not to pitch in the game yesterday. Scalded foul by. Baker. Parts of four seasons with the Cubs for Jeff. Two and two the count. Zuna and Yelich. As well for the Marlins here in the ninth. Kyle Hendricks will pitch for the Cubs tomorrow night. Left hander Brad Hand will pitch for Miami. He's not facing Raleigh Fingers. Yeah, make that happen. Or David Palm. -er. Swing and a miss. He got him on. Well, it looked like a cutter for strike three. I used up all of the. the yeah, I'm analogies. thinking about it. Yeah. It had to be a it had to be a knuckles somebody. Knuckles Smith. Cuticle Smith. Cuticle. <laughs> Doug Fister. There's a strike. Pinky Higgins. So here we, we have it. Did we have our so called easy win, right? Joe Madden probably would say, well, it's not easy. But all the one run games, the four run lead seems huge. Yep. By the way, you know that group of pitchers we just mentioned? You know what that is? That's our all hands team. I don't know if Pinky was a pitcher, he was a player, though. We put them in on onside kicks. Uh huh. Yeah. Five man infield. Be your all hands team, I guess. The equivalent of that.
Right field Soler. On the warning track. Two down. Well, carrying pretty well in that direction tonight. There's been a couple of balls hit that uh, carried much further than I anticipated. So they're able to run that one down as he was a couple others. Pinky Higgins was the third baseman. Yeah, we'll put him on our team anyway. Can't forget Bill Hands, who pitched for the no, Cubs. That's right. And Robert checking in on Twitter. The catcher would be Barry Foot. That's how you do it. Strike called on Kristen Yelich. Fastball at 94 off the plate outside. 94. Some charter territory for Travis Wood. Two outs bottom of the ninth and a 1 1. Two balls and a strike. A strike away, two and two. They're up. Marlins uh, averaging just a little over 20,000 a game here. Lowest attendance in the National League. Better than Tampa Bay and Cleveland over in the AL. Four. That's the first walk surrendered by Cubs pitcher tonight. Here's Real Muto. Cubs will give Yelich second base if he wants it. Rizzo backs way off. Yelich will take second without a throw and will not get a stolen base. If you were near the top of the batting order, you might be sensing a little apprehension in the Cubs dugout. After Real Muto, it's Solano. Doesn't have a lot of pop. Uh, Dome getting ready just in case things start to bubble up here. Pitcher spot due up after Solano. Short bench for the Marlins, and they've already used Suzuki and Baker. It's a very regular shortstop is available, but he's got a bad shoulder, so probably wouldn't use him. I guess it would just be Jonathan Solano, the backup catcher. 
two and two and now. And Montero will start their signs again. Cup fans on their feet here in Miami. Wood to the plate. Full three and two. Well, jumping out of his hand pretty good here tonight. Just a two seamer all over a big part of the plate here with a four run lead. Wood ready. Here it is. Solano on deck. Good luck charm. Good time to show a little dead fish fastball, a little BP fastball, and just try to catch him out in front a little bit. Jason Hamill with the win will move to four and two. Lowered his, lowered his ERA to 282. There you Swing go. and a miss. Cubs win. Nice start to the road trip, a 5-1 victory over the Marlins. They led early. They got great starting pitching. Good ball game all around. Yeah, solid, solid stuff from Jason Hamill. Some big clutch two-out hits, and then playing a little add-on late too. One in the seventh, and the Castro home run in the eighth makes it a little bit easier to finish things off here. So that'll wrap it up from Marlins Park. The final score, the Cubs five and the Marlins one. We're back at it tomorrow on CSN. Game two of the three-game set, 6 o'clock from Miami. For J.D. and our entire crew here in South Florida, let Casper Bodygate is. Stay tuned.